This is a quick tips and tricks video showing how to model thin surfaces in CFD simulations. So we'll start off by creating a CFX simulation system in Workbench and we'll open up Spaceclaim, a direct CAD modeler, to start creating our geometry. I previously created videos showing the topology and meshing required for thin surfaces in CFD simulations. However, things have gotten a little simpler in recent releases and so I thought I'd do an update video to show you that we can make some of these internal surfaces in a slightly easier fashion. So we'll start off in space claim. I'm just going to create some simple geometry. Um, we'll make a little rectangle here and I'll extrude it. Let's put a quick plane on the end and I'll continue extruding up. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my thin surface on this uh, plane that I've made in the middle here. So we'll go ahead and select that plane and we'll come over to our sketch and I'll put in the surface that's going to be my baffle plate. Okay and I can exit out of there and now you'll see in my feature tree I've got a solid and a surface. I'll just hide the plane to make it a bit more visible and as I hover over the surface you can see it highlights in the middle of that volume. Okay. So now the trick is to share the topology between the solid and the surface and that will allow the mesher to mesh directly on that surface. So you'll remember previously we'd have to slice this block into two and do an imprint face. We don't need to do that anymore. So the key step here is to go into workbench and we're going to select this share option here. Before you do that you can um, use this overlap bodies and that will ensure that everything's overlapping properly if there's any um, overlap where that surface was sticking out the side of the, ed the, the uh, volume here it would trim that automatically in this case I've made sure it's internal so we're okay and if I simply click on share then um, it'll give me this information, one baffle found, and I can either click on it or hit accept with the checkbox here, and that will ensure that that's been shared. So the next stage will be just simply to go out of um, space claim and open up the mesher and generate a mesh. So here in the uh, meshing application, we can simply hit generate mesh. We'll run with the defaults. We just want a coarse mesh to show the uh, operations. Now it's a bit difficult to see internally here. Even if I do a, a split plane, you won't see that internal surface. But it is in there. It's it's roughly in this location here, but you can't see the mesh around it because it's so coarse. But anyway, we'll take that off then into um, CFX. We don't need to create any name selections in here. So when we bring this into CFX, you can see the outline of that uh, baffle plate in the middle there. It's highlighted, but it's not part of the default domain. If you hover over, you can see that it's not actually part of that default wall boundary condition. Where it's uh, contained is in this connectivity. So at the moment, fluid is allowed to pass through there, and it's part of our one-to-one -one connection. So if I come over to this connectivity, do a right mouse button, and list show one-to-one -one connections, we can see that it's part of that um, there. So to get this to be a, a wall boundary condition, we actually delete the connectivity. So at the moment, this is connected and it allows fluid to pass through there, kind of like an interface. Um, but if we come across and delete it, and then we come to our default wall, you can see that now it's become a wall boundary condition. One other thing that's important to show in this configuration is the updates. So if we wanted to edit that baffle plate and it was just a simple blockage but we wanted to put some holes in it which is typical for a, a baffle plate, we come back into the geometry and if we just hide this solid and come onto this surface and we'll do a we'll come in and sketch again, we'll make sure we're on that plane and we'll just put a little hole in here and We'll make a pattern of that. And we'll accept that as a default. Now, what we'll find is to get that to update in the mesher, when we close down uh, the space claim, what we actually need to do, we can't simply refresh. Normally, when we make a, a geometry update, we would refresh in the mesher. What I find you have to do is actually hit a reset here 
and allow that uh, to to be reset and I'll do the same thing here in CFX and then open up the mesher so when you make any edits to that um, baffle plate I find you do need to make a reset on the mesh and setup uh, and then when you open it up it will remesh properly so here we've re-imported geometry and we can just go ahead and regenerate the mesh and uh, if we take a slice through now because we've added some detail you can actually see in the middle how it's refined around that baffle plate with the holes in it so we'll just go ahead and, and open that up into um, CFX and it's the same process so now you can see when we bring this into CFX we have that plate with all the holes in it and again if we come over to connectivity and we do a show one-to-one -one connections it'll list all of those interfaces now in this case you'll notice there's one for each of the holes plus the plate and if I come over and highlight them they highlight in the graphics window and I can scroll through and find the main plate which I'd want to delete to form uh, blockage. Now in this case it would have maybe been an advantage in the meshing application to create a named selection and then it would have been easier to identify rather than scrolling through the list but again the process is the same. So one final thing I want to show is just how this works with Fluent so we'll close down CFX and open up a new Fluent and connect the mesh together. So we'll come over here grab a Fluent component system and I can simply drag the mesh across and then just do a quick update and when we open Fluent we should see the similar configuration now in Fluent we do find that we will need to create a named selection so when we come in it's the act actually the opposite to CFX it automatically creates the baffle wall so if we come into boundary conditions you can see we've got the wall and the shadow for the other side and if we go to display the mesh and turn off the outside wall and just show the baffle you see everything's blended in and I think I covered this in a previous video so we would need in this case to create that name selection and be able to isolate the uh, internal holes and the external plate which we would want to make as a wall but that concludes this this update to creating thin walls so the functionality has been improved it's a little bit easier to do now the old method still holds true it's just that it's not necessary to break up the solids in space claim we can use the merge topology option and uh, the mesh will automatically mesh this and this will get carried across into both CFX and Fluent